dudes made from 8020 back for a lesson of the week once again i'm in the daylight studio here where i've got the daylight shining on me it feels super good if i'm not doing a drum cover today i may as well come to you from the sunny studio so today's lesson is actually inspired by a coaching student of mine who had the opportunity to attend one of benny greb's camps and he said Benny gave him a lot of like really mind atomizing advice. And one of the things that he singled out as being super valuable were these permutation drills. So a lot of these lessons are kind of, I check out a person and I show you how to play something like them. But this one is sort of born out of the fact that my students video that he shot for me practicing Benny's stuff kind of got me practicing this little warm up. And I'm generally not a big fan of warm-ups, but hey, it's red meat week. I'll throw you guys some red meat. So traditionally, what people do with permutation warm-ups is you'll have some kind of matrix, like let's just say paradiddle. And then you'll do some sort of permutations over that. So if it's a 16th note matrix, you're going to do first 16th, second, third, and fourth. So that'll sound like this. Three, four. And sometimes you'll do two note groups. So it'll be like this. But I kind of want to turn that on its head because that's been done. So the very first thing is that my warm up is in six. And when I was practicing this earlier, although I don't have the metronome for you now to demonstrate, I had the metronome at quarter equals 130. So it's six, four at 130. So that's, I'm just guessing, but around about here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you don't have to do this, but I had the metronome on the 16 offbeats. So it was like one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. And the important part of that is I've actually got my hands lining up with that. So this is something a lot of people ask me about the micro time is how do I practice the micro time better? And besides starting and stopping the micro time, one suggestion I give people is actually lining their left hand up or their weak hand, whatever the weak hand is, by the way, weak hand, we're trying to make both our hands equally strong, but for nomenclature purposes, you're lining your weak hand up with the off beats. So I'm making a lattice with my hands that's literally just this. And I'm not really gonna hit the symbol every time, but I was just hitting that there to mark one for you. So you can certainly do that with the traditional sort of basic bass drum stuff. So let me give you that really quickly. But I want to make it more interesting for you. So we're gonna do that dotted eighth over the top of that with the kick drum. So that'll be our, our basic structure. So let me show you that. And then the interesting thing that you can do is double each of those dotted eighths in turn. So you'll put a double on the first one, beginning on the first note where it would have fallen, then on the second, then on the third, and then on the fourth. So let me show you what that'll sound like. Four, five, six. So that's how I like to practice those dotted eighth permutations. So then the other interesting thing 
Or the other thing I think is interesting to play over the top of that is groups of 516 and 716. So, but it's still lining up with the overall six. So let me show you what that'll sound like. And of course there I was renewing the cycle every measure so I wasn't letting it loop. And I was also capturing the downbeat for you on the cymbal. Now let me actually let the cycle loop over the bar line and I'll still capture that downbeat for you on the cymbal. So the last thing I like to do is actually double every second note. So it would be like this, if you, without thinking of the six over the top of it yet. So now let me play that for you over the top of the six. Four, five, six. So you can do that with 7-2, I'm not going to spend time talking about that here. But the other thing I like to do is do all of these exercises with the hats on 8 notes. So take the hands away, you can add the hands too, but let's do all these exercise, exercises in sequence with the hats on 8 notes. So. And now let's do those fives. Four, five, six. And finally, we'll do the fives with the double every other note. Four, five, six. And you can do a hybrid. So you can do, but also I have the hats going, so. So let me take you through a few of those with that construction. Four, five, six. You said the second time through there it got better. I'm still working on this stuff myself. Let's do the fives, just for fun. Four, five, six. By the way, you know you're doing the fives right if after the end of four bars it's your your ride symbol or your demarcation should land in empty space. And because it's a five note pattern that cycles, that'll actually cycle around after five bars. But we're only doing it for a four bar cycle. So you get the gist. So dudes, that's my Bren Benny Greb-esque split hand micro time warm up for you guys, dedicated to my student who went to Benny's camp, holler. So dudes, you know the drill. I've got a brand new three video series for you. If you're looking to take your playing deeper and finally feel the feeling of progressing from whatever plateau you're on to getting better, you need to focus on the essentials. And after a few years of running this channel, I've distilled it down to three things that I see the most common differences between great drummers that we admire and ourselves. And they break down to 
playing clean, which is what I was just talking about, all your stuff's lining up, playing in time, which means you know speed up or slow down, and having improvisational flow. And my brand new free three video series will help get you started. Just click on this link, enter your name and email on the next page, and I'll send you three videos to improve your playing in three weeks or less. Dude, just been real. See you again real soon on another lesson of the week. I'm Nate, 8020 Jummer. We out.